Hello and welcome, my name's Tabby, I'm a film graduate, filmmaker and Bayhem defender. Today I'm going to be reviewing the new David Bowie biopic Stardust, directed by Gabriel Range and starring Johnny Flynn in the titular role. Johnny Flynn wears a hat that's very similar to this one throughout most of the film so I thought why not. I got to see this one early thanks to Raindance Film Festival, so big shout out to them for keeping things running in the midst of all this chaos. Do you consider supporting an online film festival during second lockdown? I'll leave a link to a few going on down below in the description. So Stardust operates as a kind of origin story that sees Bowie travelling across uh, the USA in 1971. This was a very difficult point in his career and it was shortly before he reinvented himself as Ziggy Stardust, his well-known persona. You'd think with the huge recent commercial successes of Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocketman and even Judy that Stardust would be a sure thing, another kind of Oscar Beatty hit. But the general online consensus following the release of the trailer a couple of weeks ago is that this film really shouldn't exist. I have a number of problems with the film itself, but it's extra challenging going into something that has the odds stacked against it anyway. It's obvious from watching the film itself, but it's also been confirmed that the filmmakers didn't have permission from the Bowie estate to make this, and it would, it's not a great start and as a result they didn't have the rights to any of his music which isn't really ideal for a biopic about a musician. <laughs> I don't know how accurate this film is in terms of mirroring Bowie's actual career, I would assume not very, and it does take liberties but it's pretty upfront about them, it says it's a work of fiction within the first few seconds. It even incorporates plot points to minimise the fallout of not having the music rights, so when Bowie's out on tour in the US he doesn't have the correct visa to be allowed to perform, so no original Bowie music allowed. I confess that my personal knowledge of David Bowie as a significant cultural figure is minimal. Um, I love his music, I recognise how important he was to the world of art and music both. I also know that he had one pupil bigger than the other, which is a quirk I proudly share with him, but in terms of his life story they could put anything to screen and I'd probably believe it. My point is I have the bare minimum of subjective Bowie fan stakes in this. So when I tell you <laughs> that it's um that it's bad, it's a bit morally and ethically dubious. Du dubious. The words become a sound. Filmmakers always set themselves a big challenge when they set out to make a film about an iconic figure and Bowie's just about as iconic as they come, uh, so the number one thing you've got to get right is the casting. Don't get me wrong, I love Johnny Flynn. This film has been on my radar for a while now because of his involvement. Lovesick is one of my favourite shows of all time, and I loved his interpretation of Mr Knightley in Emma earlier this year. I also really like his music. The first time I heard it was on the soundtrack of The Detectorists, I think, but my point is I have nothing against Johnny Flynn as an actor, as a musician, as anything. I really do think he went into this with the best of intentions, I genuinely do believe that, but at the end of the day he's not David Bowie. In the scenes where the character does sing and it's always covers of other bands, it's not David Bowie singing, for me it's Johnny Flynn singing, he's got quite a distinctive voice himself, so doubling for another singer was never really going to work for me. Now this is quite a small film, it didn't have the biggest budget in the world, and that may have impacted on the level of spectacle here, or rather the lack of it. I don't know how you can make a film about a David Bowie so dull, but here we are I guess. The plot itself is pretty bleak, it follows David Bowie and his US manager Rob Oberman from Mercury Records, played by Mark Moron, who is actually quite good in this, he's really trying his best, and they're going from place to place, not performing any of the original music and butchering interviews sort of left, right and centre. Couple that with the existential ponderings that hit one after the other as Bowie anticipates a psychotic break, and it's all rather dark. His half-brother Terry has diagnosed schizophrenia and he's convinced that he has it too. Now the film isn't a complete and utter car wreck. I don't think it was made with ill intent. There are a couple of moments in there that are perfectly watchable, <laughs> but that may be because I like Johnny Flynn's singing voice more than anything. It's an odd thing to watch a film that seems self-destructive, 
it seems to me that it was doomed from the start. Sort of no blessing, no music rights. I feel that Bowie fans are more likely to call for a mass boycott than they are to flock to cinemas or to online streaming platforms as the case may be when it's released in a few days. And it calls into question I guess the morals and ethics of making something like this when you don't have the deceased's permission and you don't have the permission of the estate should these films go into production at all. Unfortunately Stardust is a dull biography about a truly iconic character where one would expect to find the electric flair of an Andy Warhol painting, it's drab and plodding. The lack of music marked it out as a dead film walking before I ever pressed play. I'm giving Stardust a 4 out of 10. Now it's due a wide release in the US on the 25th of November and from what I can gather a UK release will follow shortly because the rights have been picked up. As always thank you for watching, I'm hoping to be a lot more active on YouTube from now on so if you enjoyed today's video be sure to drop a like down below, it really helps me out a lot and if you want more reviews, film festival coverage and best of lists be sure to subscribe. Until next time, 